Devin. I'm one of the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Portfolio Librarians here at the Greater Victoria Public Library. And today um, we are doing Opera 201, a um, mini video discussion with the Pacific Opera Victoria's Community Engagement Quartet. And I would love it if the quartet would introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Simon Chalifou and I'm a bass from Montreal. Hi there, my name is Ryan. I'm a counter tenor originally from Newfoundland, but living in Toronto. Hello, bonjour, ni hao. My name is Mike Fan, Fan Zuming. I use they pronouns and I come from Chinese Canadian immigrant heritage, very proudly so, queer and non-binary, and I'm joining in from Toronto or Takaranto, the land of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, Mississaugas of the Credit, and Huron Wendat peoples. Hi, my name is Rebecca Gray, and I'm a soprano and composer also zooming in from Toronto. Excellent. Well, welcome to all of you. Um, and the question for this segment is, what has it been like performing digitally uh, during the pandemic? And also, how does performing opera digitally differ from live productions that you have been a part of? Sure. Well, I have lots to say about this question. I'm very pleasantly surprised at the other, other end of, um, well, I mean, the pandemic, it's, it's still, there's still things happening in, in the world. Um, but fortunately, we're seeing a lot of the hope and things opening up and um, people recovering and spaces becoming healthier and safer, which is wonderful. Um, but I'm very surprised after a very intense year where the pandemic first started that actually it was one of the busiest, actually it was the busiest year, continues to be in 2021, busiest periods I've ever had, uh, which I did not expect. I'm very grateful because a lot of places were shut down and there were lots that wasn't able to happen. But I think we're very fortunate actually that this pandemic happened in a time where we're so digitally connected and there's so many opportunities. Uh, in 2020, I was finishing my master's at the Sherlock School of Music at McGill in Montreal. And we were actually very fortunate that we were on the very cutting edge and produced actually way more opera than that school or anywhere really produces a year. Uh, we produced, I believe, close to 30 productions in that one year, where usually they produce three. Um, and it was quite incredible. A lot of them were shorter works, but there were also lots of full productions. And I really got to experience a full range of digital performance because there's a lot of different ways it can happen. So some of them were simple uh, broadcasts of a performance live in a hall without an audience. These included uh, a Verdi opera that I was in, as well as a recital I did on the repertoire of Pauline Viardo. And it's very much centered with one camera and just showing what's happening on stage. And what I found was really exciting was that a lot of my friends and family from around the world were able to tune in. And I had a friend watching from France, someone else from Africa and the States and all across Canada. And that would be very difficult in person to have everyone there gathered to be together, uh, you know, in that experience, which is wonderful, but it also allowed so many others to partake. Then I was also in the musical Cinderella, which we filmed as a film production. And so everything was totally filmed, totally out of order and assembled later with special effects, such as the fairy godmother and uh, with green screens. And that was a strange experience because you didn't actually follow the story chronologically. By the end of the day, I ended up shooting something that was very um, anticlimactic. And we had our very, very big, glorious finale earlier in the day. So it was totally out of order. So it took a lot of organization to figure out what am I wearing when? What is happening dramatically? Because if you don't have that dramatic art from start to finish as in a live performance, you really have to think, OK, what am I doing in this moment? Where did I just come from? Even if I didn't come from that moment just now and I was in a different costume. <laughs> so that was a really interesting experience. Uh, and there was another there's some other digital performances and films that I created for with uh, the Tapestry Opera collaboration with Opera McGill, with my company Opera Queens. And I really found that because you're able to do different takes, you're also able to work out some of the mistakes and the errors. At the same time, it takes so, so much stamina because there was one project I was filming where we did seven takes. And unlike in film, we're singing with our full voice each time and we can't mark because each of those takes could be used. So it really has to, if we have to know 
uh, how much we're filming and have the stamina and the freshness to be able to do it with the same amount of energy as you would do if you had a performance and you only had one chance to do it. So that was something that was really amazing. And I also got a chance, for example, to perform in a Britain opera where it was imagined for the digital space with uh, boxes and people were playing cards across screens. That wasn't happening in real life. And there were some really interesting things that happened. It ended up winning uh, an award with the National Opera Association, I believe. And that was something very interesting where it was imagined for the digital space. We were all in the hall together, but we were interacting. And I was kind of working with uh, pointing out virtual people that would appear later on with the screen that wasn't I wasn't seeing. So there was a lot of different options, a lot of different things. I had some Zoom gigs that were performed on Zoom Live as well too, and I got to have a little bit more of an intimate imagining where it's just really my face and shoulders. So there's such a big plethora, and I think it really opened the door to a lot of creativity. And even though we love having the audience there, there to feel our um, unamplified voices in the space going right to people's hearts, I think it really allowed us to also see what is possible and to use a digital medium to help tell our stories in different ways to reach new audiences that don't have the means to come to an opera house or the financial means or the physical means, for example. Um, so uh, I've been really grateful that I've been able to be introduced to that world and to see what those kind of possibilities are. I will echo everything Mike said, and I will offer a slightly different perspective as well that I um, I will congratulate the opera sector, uh, one that maybe is not always the most forward thinking or the fastest on its feet, uh, that it did very quickly adapt to this digital world. Uh, and I think it's important to remember uh, from a producer side, how many changes this saw for the opera sector uh, in understanding how contracts are negotiated uh, in terms of being recorded, something that classical singers are not often done, having to sing with microphones, working on film, understanding how to take direction for film as opposed to the stage. There were so many changes that the opera sector was experiencing. Uh, and I think you're seeing beautiful productions, I think currently still available um, at the COC. Uh, they have an online production of Johnny Skiki, uh, which was produced for film. Um, and with a company that I have called Opera Q, uh, we actually took what was originally supposed to be a stage show uh, and transitioned it to a fully filmed uh, opera project uh, that was created and directed for the film as opposed to the stage. Uh, and I think this was brand new for our singers as well because they actually ended up lip syncing a, to a pre-recorded track. Uh, and as Mike mentioned, things are filmed out of order and suddenly they are understanding how to produce emotions for a film camera that is so close to your face as opposed to the back of the hall. Um, but I think ultimately it has given singers um, a whole brand new skill set. And ultimately I think it has also given opera companies and producers and artistic and general directors sort of insight into uh, an artistic field that is so close to opera and certainly like a, a friend of opera, but one that had never really crossed those barriers. And so I'm very interested and excited to see as we go back to sort of the traditional live theater, how we will continue to incorporate elements um, from the film world. Yeah, I think I think my colleagues uh, did a really good portrait of what it was. Um, I can add a little bit of my own experience. Um, I, there's been two sides. I haven't sing a lot. I uh, I branched out to different career path during the pandemic, but um, one of the thing that was really hard for me was the, the audition. Um, I think that a big part of the audition is presenting yourself and the way you connect with the panel. And when you're on video, it's so hard to audition because they basically see you sing for for no one like you have to imagine people and you have to try to imagine the jury and this I think this for me has been one of the the biggest struggles that I can't it's harder for me to sell who I am as an artist through video for an audition uh, and then I did a production a full production of Don Giovanni with uh, with Broad Opera and it was I think the main thing for me that makes opera so amazing is to connect with my colleagues. Uh, I I, I'm not a big fan of recital because I love telling stories, but I don't like to tell stories by myself. And the recital is me on stage trying to create a story. And, um, and opera is this amazing art form where you're on stage and, and if, and everything happens on stage, you never know, like from show to show, 
different things will happen. Someone will drop something. Someone will walk in without a wig. Uh, you never, like, it's all of those things that make opera so amazing and how you react to, to someone. Like, I've seen wigs fall on stage and that makes, like, that creates connection with the audience and then you play on that. And uh, doing that, that production of Don Giovanni was so weird because you had to imagine what your colleagues were doing and so we would pass on we would pass from screen to screen let's say a hat and uh and then i i had my girlfriend passing me the hat and and i had to kind of imagine what my partner was doing and you don't even see it because you kind of record at the same time and so you see just the end and so it was it was amazing to sing. It was amazing to try something different, but I was missing so much to be able to connect with my colleagues and to answer them. Because when someone to, like opera is answering to what your colleagues uh, are doing. And so this this was something that I missed really. And I, I still miss and I can't wait to to be in Victoria in, in May because that's that's what I'm I'm wishing for is to be able to sing with the uh, with my three colleagues and to, to be able to create something and to answer each other. And uh, although I, I watched the production of Broad and it was really great and we did a good job. And and I've had some amazing comments from people like Mike and, and Ryan said that now you have people from all over the world who are able to see you and to see you from really up close, like on a five 5,000 seat house you don't see the eyebrow lifting up or you don't see how we work with our mouth because our mouth does a lot of work that people don't see normally uh, in opera. And I had friends calling me and be like, wow, it was so fascinating to see your mouth move from register to register. And so I think it allowed people to understand how much work we put and how we deal with, with how we sing. But uh, I... And that means that we should keep doing that, but I'm really looking forward to be in presence and, and connecting with colleagues. And I'll just add on a little bit about composing during the pandemic, because I, man, I mourned a lot of loss in premieres that were supposed to happen. And the pieces that I wrote were just not meant to be like recorded in separate tracks and assembled onto a Zoom screen. Like that's just not at all, they were for choir, it wasn't gonna work. Um, so, you know, some things you can adapt and some things I was like, I, I'm not doing that adaptation thing. But I did some really cool like co-composition video projects, which is not something I would have thought of before, where um, instead of trying to like, you know, record your own piece and get the, all the separate tracks working, we would each, someone would record a line and then send it to someone else who would then like add their own improvisation or composition on top of it. And we built something together. So I, one example, I collaborated with someone in Mexico, Tasmania and London. And together we wrote a piece and then also made a video for it. And it was awesome. It was so cool. And it was something I wouldn't have ever done before. So they were, there was a lot of loss, um, but there were also some cool um, new things to try out and really exciting aspects of the video genre. I'm sick of it in some areas, but I'm also very excited for how to, how to take it moving forward. Wow, that is really, really cool. I, um hearing you all talk about the different ways that you've used um, the digital realm to, to tell these stories and to make these performances, I never would have even imagined. Uh, it was also really interesting hearing some of you talk about um, missing that connection with your um, fellow performers. I know in the library world, we do a lot of programming um, and we really missed, uh, I find I really missed the connection with my audience, but a lot of our programs are very solo. So I never would have thought about that connection with, with your colleagues in that way. So thank you for sharing all of that.